Hi, this is Neil Jason, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you from the Alpha Distribution booth at the 2020 NAM Show, Anaheim, California, with my old friend Neil Jason, bass John. legend Neil Jason. How you doing? Thank you. I'm doing fine. Nice to see you again, too. Thank you. Nice to see you, too. You and I go back a long way. Yeah. When I was writing my first book, yep. Funk Bass, which yep. came out in 1992. You had to tell them the date, though, right? Yes, it did. It was amazing, fantastic book. Thank you. You endorsed it, and you helped me get get rolling here. And you, uh, you're also the one that introduced me to Will Lee, who also endorsed it, and he wrote the foreword to one of my other books. But I, I always think of you. You've played with so many people, and you're a New York guy. I always think of you as having played with the New York guys like Mike Stern and the Brecker brothers and David Sanborn and all of those people. And I know you've played with so many others. You and I actually did an interview... I think it was about six years ago or something like that on ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Yeah. And I thought it was, uh, I think enough time has gone by where it's not too soon to do a follow-up interview. So if you want to pick some highlights or just talk about what's going on, bring us up to date on what's been keeping you busy for the last, you know, little while. Um, uh, the music continues. Everything's been great. Um, spent a lot of time again in the studio uh, doing production, um, especially in the last 10 years. I've uh, been working with uh, my wife's big band, Brigitte Zari, and uh, doing some albums there. Been working with uh, Brian Ferry and Roxy Music, and um, played at their Hall of Fame induction uh, 2018 19. And that must have been special. It was extremely special. Um, and I got to play on a few albums with uh, Roxy, and then I continued doing solo albums with Brian, and now I'm back out on tour with Brian. Um, for a couple of years, we've been doing uh, world tours, and between working with Brian, working on his new record, working on my wife's records, and uh, my uh, latest and uh, endeavor is, um, I started many years ago, uh, and I'll just show you this real quick. This is the, the new Sea Moon Funk Machine, and this came out of, this is the box that we used to use with the Brecca Brothers uh, on uh, heavy metal bebop and a lot of different records on the trumpet, on the sax, on the bass, on, in fact we used it on everything except maybe the snare drum. Um, and I used it on Brian Ferry's record on the main thing and quite a few other albums. This is the Auto Wah, the funk machine that we used and a lot of guys used it back a long time ago. So I've brought it back and made it available this year at NAM, and it'll be for sale soon. And just doing that, and um, you know, playing uh, occasional sessions and doing a lot of producing has kept me extremely busy. And I'm very thankful and blessed to still be doing it. You take me back when you mentioned those Brecker Brothers records. I've played them to death. I still listen to them. And I do too. I wish I could play like that. It's a song called Inside Out that always stands out. I love that one. But I, I remember, I should have mentioned, seeing you a bunch of times on the David Letterman show subbing for Will Lee. Not just playing bass, but singing. Like East River. Yeah. Um, East River was a song that we did with the Brecker Brothers right. on the Heavy Metal Bebop record. Yep. And it became somewhat of a cult hit, um, especially for a lot of music guys and in Europe. And Paul Schaefer is kind enough to call... East River as a song um, going into the commercials every time I was subbing on the show so it was really great great fun and a great joy to get to sing the song again um, yeah it's always great to be able to revisit that kind of stuff and subbing for Paul on the Letterman uh, for uh, Will on the Letterman show was always a great experience musically um, challenging um, Paul one of the best band leaders there ever is or was on that show and um, yes, it was, and it was a great honor to be called to do the subs, the subbing stuff. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, you you were in the house band for Saturday Night Live for a couple of years back in the '80s too, right? That's correct. I did uh, two seasons on Saturday Night Live. Uh, yeah, way back when. Who was the band leader at the time? Um, uh, it's a, a wonderful question. I think it was Leon Pendarvis, who's still there okay. on keyboards. Um, but that was uh, the old, with the Blues Brothers horn section was still there. Um, Buddy Williams was playing drums. Oh, yeah. I was on bass. David Spinoza was on guitar. 
Um, George Watinius, I think, was on guitar back then also. Um, Wasn't it like with Michael Brecker and David Sanborn and, you know, those guys too? Or? Uh, they were never in the SNL band when I was in the band. Okay. Um, but they were in the Brecker Brothers when I was in the Brecker Brothers, so it was okay. Okay. <laughs> and the whole Seventh Avenue, you know, I'm going way back. I wanted to talk about what's going on and what's coming up, but you're, you're bringing up all these wonderful memories. Seventh Avenue South, yeah. that, that was just a... Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a club owned by Michael and Randy and a few other people, and we got to play with everybody there. And for about three, four years in a row, we did... Christmas and New Year's with the Brecker Brothers and the Average White Band, right. and that was like one of the greatest gigs. You did like two shows every night for like 11 nights in a row or something like that? Every night, and depending on who wanted to play, the bands would just start getting mixed up, and it was it was really fun. Um, now, in the, and hopefully in the future, touring with my wife, touring with Brian, um, if he continues to do so, and uh, the sessions that are happening, and a couple of new uh, productions and working on the next generation of pedals for Seymour. Excellent. Okay, what about beyond all that? How far can you see? I mean, you gave us a good idea of what you're doing now and what's coming up, but is there something that you've always wanted to do that you just haven't gotten around to yet? Yes, I'm doing it. I'm <laughs> okay. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Great. Well, that's good, and you look very happy. I, I, I'm, I couldn't be in a better place. Um, and of course, I have to thank my wife, Brigitte Zari. Um, she just makes everything so much easier in life. And that's kind of what it's all about. This stuff is hard enough and it takes a lot of soul and a lot of uh, energy for the music and for business. And having a beautiful wife who understands music, who's a great musician herself, it changes the equation for you. So thank you for noticing and I'm thrilled. Outside of the pedal, tell me about the rest of your gear. Bass, strings, amps, etc. Um, Aguilar amps. Um, love their stuff. I use it in the studio um, with a 12 um, to kind of be like my new version of a P12 uh, amp. Because a new version meaning it's, you can get that great old sound, but Aguilar's got that real clean edge that I love. And on tour, I use a 410 cabinet uh, with the big head. Uh, Aguilar stuff is just superb. Um, Labella strings, uh, 45, 65, 80, 105. They're a medium light set. Um, just perfect, spectacular. That sounds and more like medium than medium light, isn't oh, okay, it? Okay, medium. That's right. They, they were called medium light by somebody else. Everybody's got a different name for 45, 65, 80, 105. Okay, medium uh, light. Medium rare. Okay, okay, medium rare. I love that. That's better. Um, and uh, an assortment of bases, but mostly now I'm using custom bases of my own. And uh, it's just, you play for long enough, you know exactly what you want, exactly what you don't want. And yeah. So I'm, I'm having a good time playing them too. Makes sense. I want to ask you about bass technique, because we've been known on For Bass Players Only for our interviews. We've got you know, six, seven hundred bass player interviews, and we've become more and more popular for our online bass instruction. Oh. We're getting more and more people learning bass online right here at For Bass Players Only. So what advice can you, a seasoned professional, impart to our audience or to anybody who wants to learn to play the bass? What do you think is the most important thing or what are the most important things that they should be paying attention to? Um, it's a very amazing question because actually if we have time I'll write a book right now and then we can go through the entire book of what's important about doing this. Well um, we don't have that much time. But. Um, in the beginning uh, <laughs> it sounds like it's gonna be long already I'm sorry. <laughs> obviously concentrating on the basics when you start um, if you don't know how to play having a really good teacher so that you don't get into bad habits having an instrument that's set up really well so that you can understand and work with the dynamics of the instrument as opposed to finding out that you've been playing with action that's an inch off the fingerboard and you didn't know that it could be lower just learning about the physical instrument and then it is an instrument that takes um, some physicality you don't have to be muscular um, but your fingers and your hands can get tired and they could work 
if they work incorrectly, it's not going to help the muscles. So again, having a good teacher and having direction of how to do all that stuff. Once you're actually starting to play, learning what warm-up exercises are, as opposed to your favorite lick, um, playing your favorite lick as fast as you can, is that learning how to warm yourself up to get ready for the gig. It's kind of like, think of your fingers as little tiny miniature athletes, and you got to get them all warmed up. You can't just come out and run the 100 yards. So you learn all that kind of stuff. And again, the basics of playing a simple bass line that makes the song the important factor. There'll be times to solo, but the function of the bass is for you and the drummer to support the song and the artist and the sound of everybody else. If you keep that in mind and remember you're a bass player, not a bass player, usually you should be the bass player. It'll help you go a long way. Little athletes. I never heard it put quite that way. I, I really like that. I name them sometimes. But <laughs> Getting a good teacher is important, too. That's why we're happy to provide feedback to our students yeah. as well. Make sure you're doing it right. And let me give a shout-out to all the people that have signed up this past week from various spots around the country and around the world. We're glad to have you in the For Bass Players Only community. Those people are learning bass online, and we're happy to have you. So welcome. Let me ask you one more question here, Neil. I may have asked you this way back you know, how many years ago, but we probably both forgot. So I'll ask you again. What would you be if you were not a bass player? Something outside of music. I think you did ask me this question once. I draw a blank on that question. I can't think of anything. I, I really feel this was my calling. And again, very lucky and blessed to be allowed to do this. If I couldn't do this, what would I be? Um, I'd probably just want to be a musician and I would just keep trying. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny, I, I interviewed Richard Bona yesterday. I asked I love, everybody I this question. I said, what would you be if you were not a bass player? And he thinks for a second and he says, if I were not a bass player, I would be a bass player. Right, okay, <laughs> well I, got the, I now remember the answer I gave you last time unhappy okay well I said you look happy and it must be because you're playing the bass so keep doing what you're doing it's great getting together let's not wait another five six seven years or whatever it was before we do this again congratulations on all your success and congratulations on your happiness I really appreciate it you know on location at the 2020 NAM show with our good friend the happy Neil Chasen I'm John Liebman. You're watching the number one site for exclusive one-on-one -on -one bass player interviews and now more and more people's favorite place for learning bass online for BassPlayersOnly.com. Once, ag Once again, I'm John Liebman. Let's play bass.